This is Jaguars Happy Hour. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. And now, the only guy in Jacksonville who can tell you everything about the Jaguars and even throw in a quote from Winston Churchill. Oh, stop. The Honorable Brian Sexton. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> First of all, thank you, Joe. Uh, we were just talking, and I'm like, hey, you remember that defensive back that took in 2004, third round from Wisconsin? And, I, and I'm, I'm struggling to remember his name off the top of my head. Part of that's age. Part of that's running in six directions. And Jeff's like, you mean Scotty Starks? <laughs> so in, in all honesty, oh. uh, Joe, when you say that, you're really honoring uh, my friend here, Jeff Logman. Brian Sexton in with you in place of J.P. Shadrick, I hope uh, all is well with you. All, all is well. It's uh, it's the off season. Free agency is getting ready to start just around the corner. And the draft is not far away. No. No, next week is a consequential week for this franchise. Is consequential the right word? Um, it's probably a little big for some people. Okay. Find another word. Well, uh, important? Go, well, yeah, I was going to go important. <laughs> um, transformational? I don't know. I mean, uh, listen. It's not that in that sense, but all of a sudden now this division is going to be really competitive next year. You thought maybe you had a chance to be at, t- at the top of this thing for a couple of years. Now you're going to have to fight. So every move you make has to be designed to be able to battle the Houston Texans. I don't think there's any question about that. And the emergence of C.J. Stroud has, has clearly made that the case. Now the big question is, is does Tennessee have a quarterback? I don't know. I think the jury's still out on Levis. The Indianapolis Colts, the jury's still going to be out. You know, so, But clearly you have one of the best, most exciting young quarterbacks that has come out in a couple decades. You were talking about him. First of all, that is high praise because you're putting him now in Patrick Mahomes' territory. Not necessarily in terms of production yet, but when you talk about exciting and excitement – I remember, Brian, watching a college film and everybody was trying to make that debate, you know, who should they take, you know, the kid out of Alabama or the kid out of Ohio State? You know, I I go back to the one thing that I always watch a lot of, and that's film. Yeah. The film doesn't lie and that C.J. Stroud made effortless throws. He was big. He had the measurables. He had performances in big games. I was like, I don't know why people think the kid in Alabama, Bryce Young, is better than C.J. Stroud. I don't see it, but – Somebody in Carolina saw that, and that may that may be one of the biggest misses maybe in NFL history. Maybe. And it cost the coach's job. Uh, it just may, yeah. may cost the owner yeah. a lot of respect and has cost the owner a lot of respect around league circles. And it caused him to lose his cool at a game right here in Jacksonville. Oh, without a doubt. So here the Jaguars are, a year removed from looking like the long-term – you know, lead dog in the AFC South sled. Oh, slow down, and, my friend. Yeah, now all of a sudden you got a lot of work to do. Hey, well, by the way, Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. So next week, the legal tampering period begins. And I'd love to get your thoughts on the term legal tampering period. It already began. And then, exactly. And then Wednesday, the new league year begins at 4 o'clock. So elaborate on the thought that it's already begun. Well, it's, it's just funny because, you know, if you move a legal tamper, tamper or, you, or you add a legal tampering period, all you're essentially doing is saying, okay, we know you're going to talk, so you can go ahead and talk this week. But people are still illegally tampering. Yeah. It happens all the time. I mean, I don't have anything specific or concrete evidence no, of that. I guess the but point I mean, let's is, be real. they've always been doing it. I mean, agents and teams were talking. Brian, you're a general manager. I'm yeah. an agent. You know, and we're talking about a player that we have on the team. Exactly. That's okay. how it happens. We're going to have a conversation about that player because we can do that. Right. And then I'm going to say, hey, Brian, general manager Brian, yeah. you know, hey, look, I'm glad we got the, the contract done for Joe. And just remember, you know, hey, look, you know, I've had a couple people call already about Bob and, you know, just want to let you know that, you know, that um, if you're going to be in the mix, I mean, I've had a couple numbers thrown out there. And I mean, I don't know if they're real or not, but I'm hearing. Right. Wink, right. wink. I'm hearing, How you it know, goes. it's about, you know, 19 million a year. It's, it's nothing you can police. You no, cannot police private never. conversations. You'll never be able to do that. And so I kind of laugh at the legal tampering period term in and of itself. But, but on uh, Monday, we're going to start hearing numbers. Well, we're going to start yeah. hearing about guys who are committed to moving and playing in this city or that city. Well, and we're we're and in agreed the to terms. We're in the period though right now to where everybody is down on their football team in some way, shape, or form. 
Okay, people are down on the Jaguars right now because, okay, you said goodbye uh, to a safety that was really good, that was a hero in two big games, the Dallas Cowboy game and a Tennessee game. And I got a lot of respect. Uh, Most, by the way, Rayshon Jenkins. For Rayshon. Gave you two of the best plays, defensive plays in franchise history. No doubt. One, two of the most exciting moments. That, but here's the reality. People are like, ah, we cut Rayshon Jenkins. We cut Fada Kasi. You know, how can we do that? We cut Darius Williams. I'll get to Darius in a minute. Okay. With Fada Kasi, you can't have three defensive tackles that are making over $10 million a year that can't right. rush the passer. Right. It doesn't work. No, you got to fix that one. Fast. It doesn't work. So, I mean, that one I totally get. Right. Um, Darius Williams, I'm kind of confused on that one. Okay. You thought, he had, what do you have, 19 passes broken up, four interceptions last year. He had the best. some big plays. Had the best season of a defensive back for the Jaguars last year. So so I get a little bit of that concern. Right. He's 31 years old. Do you have a plan to replace somebody of that caliber? Uh, is he is he really your best defensive back? Well, that's debatable because you have Tyson Campbell. You know, Rayshon Jenkins, I totally understand. you got a young player in Antonio Johnson. you got Andrew season, Winger. Yeah. you got Daniel Thomas, one of the – Strongest position groups that you have on the football team totally understand the Rayshon Jenkins thing. And I, and like, I wish him the best. He's going to make some good money for somebody else, and he's still got a good football player. And by the way, he, not just those two plays in 2022. You had him for three years. When you sign a free agent, you hope he works out for one or two. If you get three years out of a guy like that, yeah, yeah you're doing something right. Yeah. And and here here's the one common theme of, of, theme of the guys that, that you've released – you paid him big money in free agency because you haven't been drafting good enough to not have to go out and do that. Right. So that's the part that needs to change for this franchise going forward. Draft and develop instead of spending a lot of resources in free agency. So Darius Williams is gone. How much of that do you suppose is Ryan Nielsen coming in and we keep hearing that they play press? I don't know. I, I, that's a great question. Because he's an interior... I mean, he played outside last year, but before he came here, he was an inside corner, right? Yeah, but, you know, look, you listen to what Doug Peterson and Trent Baalke said all along about Darius Williams. That he's better on the outside. He's he better on the outside. Well, he was for this football team. If, if they cut Darius Williams after year one, I'd have been like, oh, okay. Right. He didn't have a great year the first year. He did here. not. Last year, he was, a, he was a top 10 corner in the National Football League. You look at... Pro Football Focus, their rating of him was extremely high for the first three quarters of the season. Now, he tailed off a little bit at the end of the season, but for the most part, he was considered one of the best, one of the better, I don't want to say best because a lot of people kind of, okay, what's your definition of best? How many is that? One of the better corners in the National Football League. Listen, I'm always always hesitant to get too much into numbers on a show that's primarily a radio show, and we know folks are listening to 1010XL right now. but I do want to talk about a couple of numbers and try to make it make sense. Mm-hmm. After the Jaguars had their roster moves this week where they released players, Darius Williams and Rayshon Jenkins primarily, they got themselves to a point where they are $20 million, almost $21 million under the cap. And of okay. course, that includes the franchise tag on Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Okay. So you're still $20 million under. With him with, the, with $24 million against What it. do you got to have for the draft? Draft Four, class. $14, $15 okay. million? Not in that range, because they've a got lot 12 of picks. Not a, so you don't have a lot of money. Now, when you see that Darius Williams is gone, and you don't have a ton of money to go out there and chase a premium position, you pretty much are pointing to the draft and saying, we're going to draft cornerbacks this year who are going to be able to come in and play the style of defense that Ryan Nielsen wants to run. Easier said than done. Well, it's hard when you talk about press. <laughs> it's hard to have a corner to come in in year one and have them be an impact player. It just doesn't happen. There, there's only so many Sauce Gardeners sure. or, or Darrell Revises that walk in on day one. Did Jalen Ramsey do it on day one here? Yeah, for okay. the most part right. he did. So you're yeah. talking elite. Yeah, there's just, not many guys like in that. In the Jaguars history, they've had one guy do that. Him. Right. Yeah, but it's just, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, that's a position I think that it, it takes time, and sometimes it takes some hard knocks to learn some hard lessons. So the Jaguars find themselves in a situation where – now, they don't have a lot of cap room unless they get a deal done with Josh Allen. There you go. Now, it, and to be critical a little bit here. Okay. When well, have you ever not been willing to be critical? <laughs> Never. Go for it, the guy. Okay. For example, Ezra Cleveland. Yeah. Okay. Got Just done before the free agency period. You know, why, why didn't you have that opportunity with Josh last year? 
you know, to be able to sign him to a long-term deal. I mean, good player. They wanted to prove it. And I, I want to say great player yeah. because I, I don't know if he achieved the level of greatness at, at, at last year's point. Right. Good player, really good player, really good person. Draft pick, okay? Loves Jacksonville. Right. Okay, so you, I think you We've missed. talked for years about signing your own guys. And, and again, in an environment that the salary cap you knew was going to go up, why would you not? Why would you hesitate or delay trying to do a long-term deal with, with Josh up until now? You know, and then the one part that was a little bit surprising when Trent Baalke talked in his, in his postseason press conference, he talked about the desire to sign Josh long-term. And Josh's age, agent came out and said, well, our phone hasn't rang yet. Now, you got to be careful there because the, that, you know, that phone line worked for the last year and a half. How much does respect? Could have been a lot less money, too. Yeah. How much does the perception of respect Big. matter as a player? Big. Big. I think that's, that's uh, you know, players want a lot of things, okay? But the two at the top of the list are money and respect. Okay. And you got to be careful with those things. So, uh, you want to make sure that it's that you're giving them a healthy level of respect and also that the, the pay is commensurate with what uh, they believe their services provide. A couple of thoughts. First, I remember last year, Josh had eight sacks in 2022. Yep. And... The, just whispers that you would hear, well, is he a finisher? He's always around the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Is he a finisher? And I can remember sitting with him in Detroit this year when we were there for that week before the preseason game. And I said, what's your theme for the year? He said, finish. So clearly he had heard that term. Sure. Somebody said, hey, you got to finish. And this year he finished in a big way. Got a great I year. mean, 17 and a half sacks. So when you look at the numbers, again, I wanted to go crazy with the numbers, but in round terms, the top five edges are Nick Bosa at $34 million a year. TJ Watt at twenty eight million yeah, great a year, great players. Joey Bosa twenty seven million a yeah, and year. Joe, and and to be honest with you, Joey Bosa has not, in my opinion, has not lived up to that level because of the number of injuries that he's had. Miles Garrett is fourth with twenty five million, absolute monster. And Montez Sweat just signed a new deal after being traded from Washington to Chicago at just south of $25 million. I mean, so if I'm Josh's agent, I mean, the conversation's beginning at what's the, what's the uh, franchise number? Uh, $24 million. $24 million. Okay. And what does it have to do in year two franchise number? Oh. It goes up like 20%. It's got to go up yeah. by 20%, yeah. right? So it you're talking number. from 24 You mean to, if you franchise him again next year? Yeah, you, you, because, I mean, you, as an agent, your conversation has to begin with guaranteed money of franchise tags and consecutive years. They make it painful years. for teams to do it twice. Yes. It is a prohibitive number. Yes, and so, I mean, if I'm Josh's agent, I mean, the conversation has to begin at $25 million this year or a year. The salary cap went up an unprecedented Guaranteed number Guaranteed money year. of 55, 6 in the first two years alone. Ooh. I mean, you're talking incredible. And, and what it know, is. The salary cap went from what? They thought it would be you know, 230. It was 230 this year. And it jumped to 255. Yeah, I mean, big, rough numbers big, here. Big jump. It was a, they didn't anticipate it being that big. Well, next year is supposed to be the year that it takes a huge leap. With the with gambling the, money. And the brand new TV money. Yeah. They, the TV contract was extended, and so next year is when more TV money kicks in. So if you're Josh Allen, you're wanting to make sure that in the, the second year of your deal, you're not falling behind too far from the highest paid yeah, players I, I, in the league. I, don't, I think as a player, you're not worried necessarily about falling behind. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know that you're going to fall behind. Okay. It, it's happened forever. Guys always fall behind. But... You want to put yourself somewhere around the top because your numbers have been comparable to the guys that we just had right. and looked at on that list. Listen. So you want to have those numbers that are around that range. Around that range. So the Jaguars are, I think, in a tight spot. They might, they, down the hallway, they might not see it this way. But you've got Josh Allen who basically is holding you hostage. If you want that cap room to improve your roster in free agency in any way, shape, or form, you need to get a deal done. What does is, what is Brandon Sheriff represent? cap savings uh, just under 10 million yeah i mean that's a it's been rumored i don't i don't know if there's any truth to that well let's throw it because we've got this number here here are the top five cap savings jeff cam robinson would get you 16 million darius williams saved you 11.5 brandon sheriff would save you nine million dollars i'm not getting rid of one of my offensive linemen 
Okay, because that's a that's been an area of concern. So just just letting you know. So you so both of those guys are here as far as you're concerned. Uh, sheriff. I mean, I can find a guard. Okay, tackles different story. Foye Aluakun would save you seven million three hundred thousand. That's the next the after Rayshon Jenkins saved five four. Yeah, those are the significant savings that are available to you by releasing players. So well, you can restructure I, if you want. But. I think the arguably the plan was a locate Foye. We, we let's draft a guy and, and Miller. replace him and. Ventura well, the guy he drafts that has an Achilles issue yeah. hasn't been able to stay healthy for a number of years, even at University of Florida. And also, the performance of Foye Lewican, you're not going to be able to cut him right now. He's too good. Right. Uh, you just you're not going to let him go. Well, you drafted Cooper Hodges ostensibly to be a guard. Where, where is he's at? Where is he at from a health standpoint? Don't know. We that, didn't see him after he injured his I don't knee know. in Dallas in the preseason. I mean, he had the knee thing, uh, patellar yeah. issue of some kind. But I guess the point is, is if you you got to get a deal done with Josh, because if you don't and you want money, you have to start digging in here with players that offer you savings. Well, and at what point do you start? The beginning of this conversation also has to begin with, okay, in the back of your mind, we have to pay the quarterback here pretty soon, well, yeah. too. yeah. Yeah, that, right. and that probably has had undue influence on it. So the question is, is you know, after this past year, if you had to, let's say, put a number grade on Trevor's season, one to ten, give me a number, mm, six, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, listen, the guy played. Okay, about injuries. what you want to compared to what you want to see, right? Six Good or seven. Year. Yeah, when you look at the injuries, you have to knock his, his season back because of all the turnovers, no doubt. But with his potential, you still think it's an eight or a nine. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so here's the question that I ask. Okay, Josh had how many sacks in 2022? Right, eight. eight. Okay, that number that you could have had with him from a contract standpoint. Okay, do do you start that I contract know, with Trevor Lawrence and hopefully that you can get that contract based on a six or a seven? I have a big thought on that, <laughs> but we got to go to a break. When we come back, let's talk a little bit about Calvin Ridley and the wide receiver number. Yeah, and just get your thoughts there. This That's is Jack's hot topic. It is a hot topic. This is Jack's happy hour. Brian Sexton filling in today. Uh, for J.P. Shadrick and Jags Happy Hours brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. And we're back after this. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Hello, I'm Dan Fields, and we have some great news. Fields has a vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to fieldsauto.com. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, 
We're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. Hey, Florida. This is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you, go the speed limit, and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me and let's get everyone home safely every single day. There's a lot of players that have hit free agency. There's another bunch of young guys that we're working on potential extensions for. So we've got a lot of balls in the air right now and we're just going to try to play them one by one. Welcome back. Jack's happy hour. Brian Sexton in for J.P. Shadrick, sitting with Jeff Lagerman here in the Miller Electric Center. Um, General Manager alluded that he has a lot of balls in the air, and he certainly does. The biggest, as we talked about before we went to the break, was Josh Allen, Mm -hmm. because that's $24 million locked up in a franchise tag, and you'd like to have a long-term deal that would bring his number down to what? You know, $4 or $5 million? Yeah, somewhere in that range, yeah. give you lots of flexibility. Yeah. You know, when you're you're looking at the salary cap, you see they have about $21 million in cap room. And you can do a lot of very clever and creative things so that you get guys in the first year of their deal at a number that works. It means you have to push money out, and Trent has been loath to do that. He has always been very proud of the fact that this was one of the teams that had the lowest amount of money pushed into forward years. Fiscal liked to take care of the salary cap and keep them in a good position. Which, Which, by the way, give him credit for doing that because a lot of the general managers are living for the now. I think the... I think Howie Roseman had three hundred million dollars pushed out. Yeah, at so uh, give him credit for being responsible for the future of this franchise. Well, and you have to think about it as we talked about with the quarterback coming up next year. When you have a quarterback that is eating up ten, twelve, fourteen percent of your salary cap, which is what quarterbacks do, now you have to push money out. You got no choice. Yeah, you don't have enough money, and you have a lot of players. Oh, you, you got need a to choice. Sign. You can draft better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And, and, Guys on working contracts solves everything. Right, but it makes it really difficult. That that's why the 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 ability to draft well is so important. And I've said this for years. It's the lifeblood of any franchise because if you draft well, it's a it's a self fulfilling thing. Because one, you're getting good players. Right. And number two, if all of a sudden they leave, then you're getting more draft pick compensation Think for Baltimore losing those Ravens, players. Yeah. Yes, the Ravens have under Ozzie Newsom, and then afterwards, Eric Costa, right, they have found still doing it, and they harvest compensatory picks for the players they lose, and they replace them with guys, which is what you're hoping. Same to Same thing here. with your coaching staff. You bring in good people, and they get hired somewhere else because you're having success. See the San Francisco 49ers. You're getting draft pick compensation for developing coaches. Well, and you better have a good coaching staff. They have a lot of young players that need to be developed to step into roles here and fill some of those as this quarterback starts to rise. These draft picks become, <laughs> they become yeah. jars on the shelf, as an old colleague of oh. ours used to refer to. Well, and, and, you better and have them. I hope that some of last year's draft picks do more this year than they did last year. Well, uh, just from year one, and, and again, Trying to grade a draft class after one year is it's it's crazy stupid to do that. You always thought it's those, a three year process, right? I was going to say you always thought because they kept the whole band and brought it back together from twenty twenty two. Those young guys were going to have a hard time breaking in, but now you need to see Brenton Strange and Tank Bigsby. You need to see a lot of these guys step into. They roles. need to have a role, right? So they, they need, can they need to have them. a significantly. Better role hopefully with you, this football team. You get a guy yes. like Cooper Hodges who steps in and pushes Brandon yeah, Sheriff. To bring in some competition to that offensive line, a group that needs an infusion at competition at right guard, and you need competition at center. All right, so we established at the start of the show that the Jaguars are hamstrung somewhat with having Josh Allen on the franchise tag. So there's, there's I don't want to say immediacy, but boy, I tell you what, if you had, it, had your eyes on anybody in free agency, because we know how expensive that is, you're not playing in the early days, I don't think, unless you get something done. Unless I'd be surprised. Yeah, I would be too. 
I would be too. Just because you don't have a lot of room, and you need to make sure that you've got room for your draft picks. Although, the argument against that is you don't need that room until you sign them, which is until July. So, you could kind of gamble a little bit that you were going to get a long-term deal with Josh and spend some of that money next week if you wanted to. Well, and a lot of people... But that are, doesn't seem like Trent's MO. Well, a lot of people are of the opinion that, well, have you gotten Josh done... Then you could have allocated the tag or used uh, some of these additional resources to sign a Calvin Ridley. Okay, let's go there. <laughs> let's go there. Um, That's been the topic all week. I'm hearing it. Can I can I throw out real quick? Let, let's look. We don't know. We're obviously not in the negotiations. We don't know what he's asking for. But we, uh, you talk. So we're to talking people. who? Josh? No, Ridley. We Kevin. don't. Yeah. yeah. So, so look, we talk to people around the league, and you kind of get a sense of where guys fit. What's the, what, what is the franchise tag number for wide receiver? About $21 million, okay. right? But listen here. They look Because here. some people were saying you should have had Josh sign a long-term deal, and then you could have tagged Ridley. If, if, if you I wanted had, Ridley. I, I agree with the first part. Let's, yeah. let's get Josh signed to a long-term deal. Would have been great if you had it done a year ago or a year and a half ago. Well, let's just put it down where it is. Right. Now it's 17 and still, a half sacks. He's got all the leverage. I'm still not using the tag on Ridley, Brian. <laughs> yeah. That's just me. Okay. And, and here's why. Ready? Here are the top five wide receiver salaries – uh, as of today, Tyreek Hill, $30 million. Worth every penny. Uh, Devontae Adams is at $28 million. Really good player. Cooper Cup comes in at $26,700,000. Mm -hmm. um, now, Mike Evans slides in here at four, right? So he's not on the graphic. Um, Mike Evans comes in at New 20, deal. New yeah, deal. $26 million. Yeah. And then A.J. Brown would be the fifth. At twenty-five million, DK Metcalf slides to sixth next year at twenty-four million. So my question is: Would you want to pay Calvin Ridley based on a thousand yards and eight touchdowns and every play that you watched last year? Would you want him in this stratosphere of high-paid receivers? Because someone's going to pay him that. Absolutely not. No. No. How about twenty-one million, which is the no? The, okay. No, I, that's that's not where I'm I'm willing to go. That's the franchise tag. Yeah, I'm not willing to go that. I'm, I'm just not. He's it, to me. He's not. A, he doesn't belong in the conversation with the list of those guys and Mike Evans. Right? Doesn't he, no. You're talking about the best receivers in football. The guy, the clutch guys. Calvin Ridley's not there. No. Not from the number standpoint. Did you think he might get there this year based on what you saw in the training camp field? Because remember, everyone was up and on. Look at this guy. He's gonna he's gonna revolutionize Doug's offense. No. Imagine. Oh, you didn't see that. No. The reason why is because Doug Peterson's offense believes in spreading the ball around. And with a guy like Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and Evan Ingram, who are trusted, trusted receivers by Trevor, I didn't think that that would happen. I, I thought that he would have a chance at getting 1,000 yards. Well, it took injuries on Christian Kirk's part and Zay Jones' part to get to, him there. for him to get to 1,000 yards. Let's not forget that the first part of the season, there were moments where, like, did Calvin Ridley play today? Right. You know, and it seemed like it the was... lack of trust between quarterback and wide receiver, you can't forget that. That's it. Because you... a lot of the numbers that were generated with Calvin really was when Christian was out, Zay was out, and the only guys on the field that Trevor could really throw the ball to were to him and to Evan. Nobody in this town, outside of people in this building, watch as much tape as you did. When you watched the tape, did you see a player who was working his way back after a year and a half out of football improving every week or did you see a guy who looked like well maybe this is what he's going to be i saw a guy that was working extremely hard i give him a lot of credit because calvin ridley's got a work ethic that's just impeccable but there just wasn't enough trust between quarterback and wide receiver some of it was on calvin ridley right some of it was on trevor and that calvin at at times i think early in the year showed that he wasn't trustworthy. And then, because, I mean, those things, it takes time to build you that. You bet it does. Right? Yep. Well, then later in the season, he became trustworthy, but then Trevor wasn't trusting him. Yeah, saw that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there was a, it was a little bit bo on both sides So then there's a that. disjointed communication between so both. Could that end up being a seamless, great working relationship right. where there's trust and everything like a Christian has with Trevor? Sure, it could be there. Right. Now, I know you said earlier that there's conversation about if you had a deal done with Josh, then you could use the tag with Ridley. I didn't, just me, having done this 30 years, I didn't get the sense that there was a sense of great urgency to get the Ridley deal done, which leads me to this. 
if I'm a guy who is looking at signing Calvin Ridley, a receiver needy team, mm -hmm. and I, I can look really hard at his big years in Atlanta where he was super productive and, and, and very tantalizing for the Jaguars to make the trade, right? A year in advance to get the deal done. But I got to ask myself, if he's that good and if he's worth that much money, why are the Jaguars letting him walk? Why did the Falcons let him walk? Oh, see, I think you got to ask these questions. I just, when you look at the process of thinking your way through, not just emotionally reacting, he, you know, that's a great player. We need great players. But when you think about what Calvin did this year, mm -hmm. what the Jaguars invested, a third round pick this year's draft, a fifth round pick last year, right? Um, and what what is the status? So it moves to a two if there's a long term. If they no, if if they sign him before next Wednesday at four o'clock in the 2023 league year, then it becomes it's a, two. a two. I'm not doing that. Anything after then it's a three. Then it's a three. And the Jaguars could certainly jump in, and 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 maybe they will. But if you're Calvin and you get free, you're going to go explore the marketplace. I would sure. imagine you yeah. couldn't help and. T. Higgins got the franchise tag. You know, he's off the market. The, the big receivers who people might have wanted to jump in and go chase, they're not there. So Calvin Ridley, if he hits the free agent market, which everyone expects him to do, is likely to get an offer that you won't want to pay. Will he, though? I don't know. I mean, I, what's the number you'd want him back at? Where do you feel like, and, and I'm asking you to be a Where's Christian at? Too. What's Christian? What's Christian's, Christian's average? All right, Christian's cap hit ballpark. I mean, right. his cap hit's like twenty. It's twenty four this year, um, which is high. But his average here's, here's his cash average. Cash uh, average over the course the, of his deal. Uh, it was twenty four, twenty, nineteen, eighteen. So th this year and next, he is nineteen and eighteen. So you're looking at like twenty twenty one average. Yeah, twenty one average. Yeah, right, ballpark. Say that right about the franchise number. Okay, about the franchise number. Um, is he at that level? For this team and this quarterback, no. So do you no, he, no, his numbers were a little better this year than Christians were last year when he played a full season. Mm -hmm. But Christians a different; he's a different receiver altogether, isn't he? I, I mean, I just you can look and say he had the same amount of touchdowns because Christian. Had I'm eight not last willing year. to have two twenty million dollar two twenty million dollar wide receivers on my football team. And I'm not the, willing to have those resources allocated to that. Not when I have an offensive line that I need to address. Ooh, we're going and, there, and not when I have. A, an interior of my defensive line that I need to address. All right. So uh, Josh Allen's on the franchise tag, and Calvin Ridley looks like he's going to hit the free agent market. Do you think there's That's a little okay. intrigue? Yeah, it makes sense. It's, it's okay if you have a player that you want to keep that, and he goes to hit the market. Yeah. That, that's okay. Well, the Jaguars are going to find out what the market is, and maybe they've got a plan. Right? It's not here in our studio. Hey, the plan is that you'd like to have them back. They do have a plan. No doubt. They have a plan for this, but one. again, I'm I'm At not right willing number. to put that number right, or that have that type of commitment. Has anyone ever called you frugal in your life? Yes, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> why you're some people have used other words too. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> Would they, that wouldn't be tarot, would it? Uh, no, <laughs> probably no, not. No. All right, folks, you are listening to Jags Happy Hour. Brian Sexton, along with Jeff Lagerman. I'm filling in for J.P. Shadrick and having fun doing it. The Jaguars, by the way, celebrating their 30th season. Can you believe we're going to 30, Logs? Amazing. Get your 2024 season ticket membership right now. Be at the bank for every touchdown and secure your seats by going to jaguars.com slash tickets. Or you can always call them the old antiquated phone call, right? 904-633-2000. Call them today. When we come back, We'll talk about the offensive line. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. 
Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie of Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. Looking for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight. Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month. Only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank. Advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey Florida, this is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you, go the speed limit, and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me and let's get everyone home safely every single day. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. Put our players in position to be successful. Give them an opportunity. And that, that falls on us as coaches through through game planning and scheming and not having too much, just have the right amount of plays to, to execute. Um, and, then, and then in turn, that falls back onto the player, right? The player has to go out and play and, and use his God-given ability to, to go execute the play. That's Doug Peterson of the Combine last week talking about the offensive lines, suggesting, and noble of him to do that, that... You can blame the players. They've got to go and execute. But at some point, the coaches have to do a better job. That's he and Phil Rauscher and Press Taylor of creating scheme. Is that what he's talking Fair, about there? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. look, you got to be committed to the run a little bit more. And you got to put your offensive linemen down in three-point stances and come off the ball a little bit, too, to help them out. All right, so let's talk about the offensive line. Ezra Cleveland re-signed. I like uh, it. He's, about $9 million a year. He's their best interior offensive lineman right now. And uh, I think it, that was critical in getting him back because you have an aging right guard who has a high cap number. High cap number. You have a center that, in in my opinion, you need to have competition there. Uh, if he plays at the level that he was at last year, then he needs to be replaced. And I'm not saying that he can't get better because anybody can get better. Well, but I, last I year's level is not acceptable. So basically what you've got with the offensive line is you've got three tackles. You've got uh, Cam Robinson. Right, Walker Little, mm -hmm. and Anton Harrison. Yep, and maybe the best of those is Anton Harrison. Um, the best feet, but I think each one has something that they bring to the table. Okay, I think Cam has a, a great leadership about him, and he's uh, he's really good for the rooms. Oh, yeah. when I say rooms, that's plural, right? Because he's good for the offensive room. He's good for the team room. He's good for the offensive lineman. Tough room. guy. Yes. Tough guy who plays I like nasty that. ball. I do too. And again, I'm going to say this, and I've been saying this about Cam for years. He probably doesn't like it when I say it, but I believe he would be the best right tackle in football, and I think that's the natural spot for him. My goodness. Who wouldn't like to be told you'd be the best tackle in football, even if it's on the right side? Uh, uh, look, uh, the no last, gonna say last that time I checked, I think there was a guy that left here that got paid how much a year to play right tackle for the Super Bowl champs? 
Uh, what did you want? Got twenty a million a year. Twenty million yeah. a year. It's one hundred percent. Slide him over now. Anton Harrison goes to the left side. He's then. got feet. To, he's got feet to play left tackle, and it's natural. He has a God-given ability to dance. Are you going to ask Walker Little to play inside or just be the swing tackle? He can swing. Okay. He can swing. Okay. And you let him compete. You know, look, if, let him compete anywhere. You know, if you want to compete at tackle, compete at tackle. You want to compete at guard. Compete a guard. Okay. Show us you're one of the best five. So, look, you're sitting at 17, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got a hole at cornerback mm -hmm. with Darius Williams on the street. Mm -hmm. So, people are pointing, and they're saying, hey, look, we need a corner, and there will be. I hate being in that position. I do, too. There are you know, a couple that, of. I, I've, hmm. always, I've always been a believer that you never want to go in the draft feeling like that you have to address a position in the draft because you have a hole. Can Buster Brown be a starter for you. He at times last year, he played pretty well the game in New Orleans stands out to me. Did okay. Okay. Did okay. Do I have confidence that he can handle it? It's no. not like you say he's ready. No. It's time for Darius to go cuz Brown is ready to go. I, I I would have confidence that he can come in and compete for a role. Okay. I don't have the confidence that he can come in and be my starter. Now, we it's also different. just got done talking about Calvin Ridley and the likelihood that he will be playing elsewhere next year if he hits the market and gets mm -hmm. a big number. Not for sure. The Jaguars could certainly bring him back. However, there are receivers who will fit at 17. That's, you, that's why I like to have all the holes kind of filled. And then you can take the best player. I want to take ball. the best player. See, and I, I've been saying this on our show on Jags AM. The BAP. Well, best for sure. available player. And the best available player at 17 is really likely to be an offensive lineman. Could be. There are more offensive linemen with first-round grades from what I'm hearing and seeing than nearly any moment in my 30 years. In an, an investment in somebody that's going to protect your quarterback is never well, a see, bad that's, thing. That's it. Your quarterback never a bad is thing. coming off a season in which the knee But is, it, the is he the best sure. player? I mean, if, if, if look, if I've got a corner. But it sure looks like there's some that are there. That is a top. 10 talent and right. I'm able to get him at 17 because of the overdrafting of quarterbacks, then I'm going to consider that. That's why you have to go into the draft with, with an kind of an open book positions don't matter. Give me the best player. But again, positions matter when, from the standpoint of is there, is, is there value? You're not going to draft a fullback at 17. No, no, but, so, I mean, positions matter. But we also saw the general manager last year backing up, because if the player doesn't fit the spot, right, you keep backing into a position where you get your player and value for your position, right? Well, so, what was it he backed up on? Was it Antonio Johnson last year that he traded back and then ended well, up Well, Anton Harrison, he traded back in the first round and picked up extra picks. Right, but there was another. The, in, later in the draft, he moved back a bunch of times. He, the in third the, round pick, he was trying to back up on Tank Bigsby. Yes. Right, they were trying to back up into He did a, a great job of backing up and getting some some good picks. And, and I, st I still believe in Tank Bigsby, by the way. I do, no, I do too. By the way, a lot of people are hammering all the number of picks, but remember when... And love Anton Harrison. Yeah, Anton Harrison is that. So you don't know where Trent's going to go, and he's certainly not going to tell us. But if you're sitting at 17 and you don't like what's there, you can move up, you can move back, mm -hmm. and, and he's been willing to trade and move around. It's just you have a couple of holes that you want to fill. And you can say, look, we've got a plenty of offensive linemen and Luke Fortner is going to be better. Personally, and I've said this, I don't believe it. I just don't. On the most well, important play of the season last year. Never assume anything. Never. Okay, so he, I'm, I'm not going to assume better. he's not going to be better and, and, and I'm not going to assume that he's going to be better. Well, I, I think but what I am it was assume, a weak spot last year. You've got to be better no matter who What I am going to assume is that that position needs competition. And the center from Oregon might sit there. But I look, it's too early. We've got weeks and weeks to go to get there. It's just... You can't stand Pat on the offensive line when you have a six foot six quarterback that you want to protect. No. He's not Lamar Jackson. He can run. How many injuries did he have last year? He had he four. Missed a significant amount of time. I mean, that's that's got a, you know, and part of that's on him. Yeah, you know, that's sure, not all cold, offensive line. Well, one hundred percent. Part of that's also on the, the knee was the coaching staff. Right. Okay, when he gets nicked up a little bit. Okay, let's rely on the run a little bit. Let's let our offensive line come off in a three point stance and let's. Let's kind of have an offense that takes a little bit of pressure off of that position. So do you think you could stand pat on the offensive line and with scheme create a better, more cohesive unit? Maybe moving some guys around like you suggested. Harrison to the left side, Cam Robinson to the right side. Cooper Hodges is competition with Brandon Sheriff. And and maybe you find somebody to compete with Luke Fortner. Can you just do a little here and a little there 
but the scheme changes and the coach's responsibility changes and it gets better. Well, and, and it's not complete scheme change. It's a little change here. Okay. It's, it's just like you said, a little change with the tweak of the lineup, a little change with maybe a tweak of what you're doing, a commitment to the scheme, a commitment to maybe three point coming off the ball a little bit. You right. know, I mean, how many times did we see this offensive line get down on the three point stance and come off the ball last year when Trevor was coming back from an injury? Uh, it didn't happen yeah, very not often. A lot. You know, I mean, not it, a lot. it just didn't happen. Yeah, well, look, I don't – Phil Rauscher has a good reputation as He's an offensive a, line Phil coach. Phil Rauscher is a good football coach. Doug Peterson's a great coach. So I don't want to say – Press that, Taylor's a great coach. That they can't stand Pat, and I agree. I don't want to say they can't stand Pat and and coach them better, get them stronger with said Scott in that in that training room, but I, I, I don't have a lot of faith in the center position, and I think that was a weak spot all year long last year. And if it was me and I was the coach, I would be pounding my fist on the table saying – You've got to give me someone to compete with him in the middle of that line because we've got yeah, to. And that, well, what did the general manager say out here? He said we've got to be more physical. Well, and and look, uh, the one thing that I do like about Luke Fortner is that he has mobility. Okay. I mean, and he's wicked smart. We know that. Smart. He's got mobility. He he's there's not very many centers that can snap a ball in shotgun and then get out in front on a run to the outside. He can do that, but he's got to be more physical. And can he get better? Again, I'm not going to assume that he can't get better. I'm going to assume okay. that I need competition. And see, that's why you're the calming voice <laughs> on Jaguars. Radio. I don't know about calming. <laughs> well, you call me down. Yeah. I, I, I've been fired up about the center position because on the first called running play of the season, 10-25 mm -hmm. to play, first quarter, Indianapolis, week one last year, second possession. Grover Stewart, and Grover's a really big man and a good player, good player. pushed him backwards. And Trevor, or Trevor, Travis Etienne had to worm his way to get back mm -hmm. to the line of scrimmage. And the last called running play of the season, fourth and goal from the Tennessee. one in Tennessee, yeah. and he was thrown backwards. That was not a good play. And everything in between just didn't feel yeah. – let's put it this way. No, I, I this understand what you're saying. This was a team that struggled to run the ball when it wanted to run the ball. Well, and uh, there's definitely there's definitely got to be a little bit of tweak going on with that offense this year. And mm -hmm. I think that that's going to happen. And uh, – I'm a big fan of Press Taylor. I think he's one of the brightest offensive minds in football. But you know, you, when you finally have the reins, sometimes you can learn a lot. Sure. And I think he's going to learn a lot from this past year as well. Doug Peterson will, uh, as well this organization will. I, some of the most insightful you conversations. I, well, yeah, there's, there's a little bit more pressure this year on that. Some of those insightful conversations I've had with offensive coaches over 30 years, he's right there at the top. Press? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's brilliant. And he and Doug are of one mind. I mean, they, they know exactly what – they finish each other's sentences if they were in the same room. I'm sure they do. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been in the same room with both of them. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy talking to Press. I enjoy talking to Doug about offense because that's never been my thing. I'm, I'm kind right. of a I'm, – I'm just – I'm a newbie to it. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, you're not really – Well, new. I mean, still kind of a newbie to it. And you so I, I always, always love to see the game through their eyes because I always look at it from a different set of eyes. And the way that they see the game, I think, is is really unique and special. And I wish a lot of fans could experience that yeah. and have the ability, whether it's VR glasses or VR in their mind or whatever the it is, to be able to see it. That, yeah. it's, 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 you know, it's, it's special. Um, you know, he gets a lot of, obviously, heat. And there's people who are listening to this right now going, oh, stop talking about Press Taylor. They should have fired him. You, I mean, you know, you hear it, right? Um the reality of it to me is is that this is a guy – I asked him as he was walking off the field. I said, does that bother you? And he goes, Brian. He goes, I coached in Philly. I can handle it. <laughs> right? He understands it. He's been around the game a long time. Yeah, but make no mistake about it. You always hear it. Yeah, you always hear it. You That's hear it. It's the nature of the beast. It's your it? hu you're humans. Right. What do you want to talk about when we come back? Uh, we can go a lot of places. Right. But I can tell you one of the places that I'm excited about yeah. for this football team is what are they going to do defensive tackle? Ooh. Well, let's talk about that. More to come. Jags Happy Hour. I almost said Jags AM. Brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. One segment left here on 1010XL. And, of course, all the Jags social media channels. Back right after this. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, 
give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Florida. This is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you, go the speed limit, and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me, and let's get everyone home safely every single day. Looking for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight, Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month, only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. Jags. All right, about eight minutes left here in Jack's Happy Hour. Brian Sexton in for Jeff Lagerman. Oh, pardon me, not for Jeff Lagerman, with Jeff Lagerman. For J.P. Shadrick, who is out this week. Well, you teased it before we went to the break. You are interested in defensive tackle, which there are a couple of them in the first round that could be right there at 17. We Good draft for DT, as they say. Yeah. And, uh, and and this is the point and time of year that I start to watch film on some of these prospects so over the next couple of weeks, be able to do some of that. But uh, the free agent market is also an area that's going to be interesting. I can't wait to see what Christian Wilkins is going to make in free agency, the talented defensive tackle for the Miami Dolphins. Well, while you talk, let me look up and see what the top defensive tackles make because, I mean, he's a guy who has really come on strong. It's amazing that uh, – that they did not get a long-term deal with him. They didn't put a tag on him. He's an excellent football player. Clemson guy, right? He is Clemson yeah, guy. Yeah, Clemson he, guy. He and, uh, and Trev were together Trevor's freshman year when they won the national championship, and Trevor talked about it. He, he might get, arguably might get the most money of, of a defensive player in free agency this year. Okay, well, so here, here are the top five. Uh Oof. A lot of money. Defensive tackle base. Base. Uh, Justin uh, Matabike in Baltimore has the franchise tag. He's at twenty-two million, so he is right now the highest paid defensive tackle in football. Did he sign a contract? Well, no, but that's the tag. Okay, that's, that's the, the tag. tag number, right? DeForest Buckner is next to twenty million. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, who I think's killer player in Tennessee. Yeah, when he's healthy, sixteen five. He was hurt last year. Yeah, he was playing with a bad ankle. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, sixteen million. Where's Aaron Donald? Uh, Kenny Clark is at 15.5. This is, oh, Aaron Donald, 12, 10 million. No, that can't be no, right. No, I'm looking at it. Either. Can't be right. Look at it. Where's right. that from? This is, uh, I use Spot Track, the salary service. Yeah. Um, they're as good as anybody, and it's the NFL salary rankings by position. 2024 defensive tackle base. 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 I, I got you. Maybe, maybe. But the, the, 
I think Aaron Donald is like over 30 a year average. Well, let's, let's like the it. seasonal average, Aaron Donald is top of the list. Let me, be. Number one, when you do uh, cash rankings. There you go. Okay. Do that. Uh, 35. He's at 35 million a year. Yeah. Then Matt Abike comes in at 22 as yeah. number two. Exactly. Right. Uh, DeForest Buckner is 20 million, 250. Okay. Uh, Dexter Lawrence is 17.5. Well, because he just got a contract last yeah. year. So. And. But he and, and Wilkins were the same genre, same group. Yeah, same yeah. same class. That's classic. And then Kenny Clark and Jeffrey Simmons are tied for the fifth at 17. 35 is what Aaron Donald is. Aaron Donald is 35 million in cash. <laughs> right? That's amazing. So, I mean, let me just read a couple of the names and you tell me where, where you think he he's If, if Aaron in. Donald were in free agency, yeah. unfettered free agency, right. okay, and let's go back, let's say, three years ago. Okay. To get him when he was still considered a young man in his prime. I and mean, some people might now say, even though he's an elite player still, some people might now say, well, you know, he's on the down slope. But let's say three, four years ago, if he went to free agency, what do you think he could make in today's cap? Uh, he'd be paid like a quarterback. Wouldn't he? $40 million. 40? Yeah. Forty million. I mean, that's that's what they're talking about with Kirk Cousins potentially going to uh, to Atlanta, right? A deal that averages about forty Would million dollars that? a year. Would you pay Kirk to have Cousins that? forty million? Oh no, but would I pay Aaron Donald? Yeah, yeah, right. With Easy your money. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some of the names, real quick. Just listen to these guys. So Grady Jarrett's in there. I think he's still a, a pretty good player in Atlanta. Good player. Uh, Deron Payne in Washington is sixteen million. Good player. How about Vita Vea? Uh, good 16 player. million. Yeah. He's, he's ninth. Javon Hargrave had a really good season this year in San Francisco. He's okay. 15. Uh, but I'm, I'm just reading down some of these names. Where's Javon Hamilton in that mix? Uh, well, hold on. Let me, Ed Oliver, Quinn and Williams, Jonathan Allen, Derek Brown, Dalvin Tomlinson, uh, Devon Hamilton, 17th. Okay. At nine, nine. And the reason I bring him up is because the Jaguars. Now you got Roy Robinson, Harris, Devon Hamilton as the expected starters at defensive tackle. Right. And that is a position that you would like to supplement somebody that can rush the passer. Devon Hamilton, arguably their best pass rusher. But if you look at it last year, you would say he's not the best pass rusher. He's trying to come back from an injury. Yeah, we didn't get to see enough of him. Can he think. get back from an injury that uh, that definitely had him not playing at the expected level that that his pay was at? If if one of the top defensive tackles is sliding down, you know, and and again. In Here the first we, round? Right. If there's one near Again, you, Brian, the, BAP, kid, from, the kid from, from uh, Illinois, the kid from Texas, I mean, there are some big, talented guys. I'm not against that. And, of course, we haven't had a chance really to talk to Ryan Nielsen in, in any sort of relaxed setting and kind of get a, fit, a feel for what he's like and what he wants. Doesn't matter. If, if any defensive coordinator, I don't care what scheme, I don't care what their philosophy is, likes really good defensive tackles. Okay. You know, and and – Okay, is, is it a guy that uh, has a skill set along the lines of an Aaron Donald or a Matt BK, you know, one of the shorter stature, excellent pass rusher, or is it a big, long guy like DeForest Buckner? You've asked any defensive coordinator, say, yeah, I'll take him. Yeah. <laughs> right. That well, list right there. Well, how about this stuff? I'll take him. But a name that I love, and I thought he was a really good player, especially in the game against him in London, Ed Oliver from Buffalo, who's not that big. But no, he's he, not that big. But he was a wrecking ball. I mean, he's a guy who makes things happen. He's a... Uh, you don't like him as much. I like him, yeah, but I don't love him. Okay. How about Quentin Williams from the Jets? I like him. Okay. I like him too. Okay. He he has he's definitely gotten better as a pass rusher, which was kind of the one thing, especially coming out of SC. I believe right. it was when watching him, I was like, you know, he he's got to learn how to come off the ball, and he's learned how to do that. But he's not in that category up there with those elite guys. Right. We have ninety seconds left. If if the Jaguars had an open checkbook next week, meaning that they weren't restricted by, uh, well, they do the, fran the franchise tag. <laughs> maybe, look, and maybe they can make it work, and maybe they'll roll the dice that they'll Massage get something done. the numbers. Yeah, and and look, Tim Walsh is really good at it. They'll find a way if they want somebody. What position would you go after in free agency? Mm -hmm. What 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 hole? Because you've talked about wanting to take the best available player. Which hole? Would you? I'm not even asking you a name. We got one minute left. What hole would you fill? Well, there's three holes that I I look at. Right, but I'm interior for offensive line, I'm interior defensive line, and, and now you got playing. a hole. Now you got a hole at corner. Which one? 
Uh, it's, it's totally hypothetical. And how much? How much money do I have to spend? As much as you want. Much as I want. Well, we're just assuming the Jaguars. Well, you got to have creative. a lot of money to buy a defensive tackle. Okay. So I mean, that's that's the one you try to fill first. Probably, but I mean, I like yeah. Can we continue this? It's not easy. I wish we could. <laughs> we're about done. It's not easy. Hey, it was fun to do this again. That's the challenge of being a GM. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an easy job. How do you solve everybody, the puzzle? Everybody thinks it's easy. It's not. Until they it get to do it. It is not easy. Thanks for having me in tonight. I Thank appreciate you. it. It was fun. Good catching up with you. Thanks, folks. Have a great evening. And, of course, early next week, we will find out what the decisions are. This is Jags Happy Hour.